get a chance to take home an Apple gadget. Get in touch with our property specialists to know how to get an Apple gadget from our TS man. Good day, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today entitled Curated Spaces for the New Normal, brought to you by the Philippine Daily Inquirer's property section in partnership with Prime Property Developer Ortigas Land. I am Texa Maniego, editor of the Inquirer's property section, and I will be your host this afternoon. But before we start, let me give you a brief overview of real estate industry and why we are doing this webinar. By the way, feel free to send in your questions throughout the discussions via the comment box below and we'll try to answer as many as we can. Okay, the Philippine property sector, as many of you know by now, has seen and enjoyed a stellar performance over the last decade. Land values have risen to record high levels while the demand remained robust, prompting property developers to launch more projects year after year. Many too have realized the value of investing in a piece of property given its steadily appreciating value compared to other assets. Indeed, the Philippines has seen a robust property sector making it one of the country's prime economic movers. Over the last several years, we've seen a frenzy of construction and activities across the country, a signal indeed of bright prospects and positive outlook of the real estate. In fact, forecasts made by thought leaders and industry experts earlier this year were that of bright prospects and lucrative opportunities for all sectors, particularly for the residential market in Metro Manila, as it continues to have enough room for growth since prices here remain affordable relative to other key cities in the region. But then COVID-19 happened, an unprecedented crisis. Following the declaration of, the, of an ECQ by the government, it was as if the whole country had stopped. The national and local governments scrambled to put in place measures to address this health crisis, help flatten the curve, and ensure the safety of every citizen. Most businesses, meanwhile, had either to, show the, to slow down or stop their operations while developers had to go back to the drawing table to make all the necessary adjustments, while all economic forecasts had to be revised downward. Immediately, the residential market, specifically in Metro Manila, is seeing tempered activity given the uncertain environment. Collier's data have shown that there were only around 1,670 new condominium units delivered in the first three months of the year the lowest number by far recorded in the past six quarters. Colliers does project a delivery of about 10,900 units for 2020, down from its initial estimate of 14,700 units due to softening demand and construction work stoppage. However, not all, all hope is lost, given that housing has clearly served as the perfect antidote to this pandemic. The past three months, as many of you may have seen or may have known, have been in, have allowed us that to further appreciate our homes, our safe sanctuary. Here, in the last three months, we've managed to realize the need to have a safe and comfortable sanctuary where all the essentials and even the non even the non essentials are well provided for. And to give us an idea of how architecture will allow us to better adapt and thrive in the new normal. May I introduce to you our first panelist and a regular contributor of the Philippine Daily Inquirer's property section, architect Victoria Lou Mawis Alliston. Vit will be discussing people's common experiences during the pandemic and how this will translate into changes in our spatial environment. She will also touch on urban developments and design elements that are seen to flourish in the era of the new normal. Again, a regular contributor of the Philippine Daily Inquirer, Vit has a professional master's degree in interior design of commercial spaces from Instituto Europa de Design in Barcelona, Spain. She received her bachelor's degree in architecture from the University of the Philippines, Diliman, and she currently works for DSFN Architect. Vit specializes in the fit-out and interior design of spaces. Her project, Hibla Filipino, an integration of Philippine pineapple, pineapple cloth industry and tree farm products, won her a scholarship in, in an international design competition. She believes that design is successful if it presents a unique, adaptive, and responsive solution to people's needs. Welcome, Architect Vit. 
Thank you. Thank you, Tech. Thank you for that warm introduction. So today, I will be sharing to you uh, the possibilities and opportunities waiting for us after COVID-19, an era known as the new normal. So, Let me begin by addressing the question that may be on everyone's minds right now. What is the new normal? Given that we've been in quarantine for several months now, many of us are itching to go back to our daily routine before the pandemic. As a cure is yet to be discovered, however, there are several changes that we must follow to keep safe from the virus. The new normal is life reimagined amidst the threat of disease and infection. It is a way that will allow us to carry on with our lives despite COVID-19 by introducing essential changes to the built environment and our usual activities. If you're wondering what changes are to be expected in the new normal, first ask yourself, how are you affected by the pandemic? For one, you definitely own a face mask now. Because the COVID-19 virus is easily transmitted, face masks have become mandatory in almost all the places outside the home. Nowadays, you cannot enter a shop or an office without being required to put on a mask. Another change that you might have noticed during the pandemic is that solitary activities are now preferred over gatherings. Whereas we used to celebrate so many events before in the Philippines, nowadays, you can't even see people dining together outside the home. You might have also been more concerned with your health and well-being as there is a need to keep strong in these uncertain times. Even if we were forced to stay at home, many of us took up exercise to remain healthy. Lastly, the quarantines might have made you more conscious of the environment. In particular, if you went through quarantine with little or no exposure to greenery, you may have suddenly found an urge to start your own herb garden at home. These changes, which you might have experienced, form the basis of the new normal environment. Considering our newfound inclination towards health, privacy, wellness, and nature, designers and developers are shifting their strategies to give us exactly what we're looking for in the post-pandemic era. To address our fear of viral transmission, real estate players are now promoting contactless technology in the form of motion sensor switches, smart plugs, and automated devices. These elements allow us to control and access our home without having to touch surfaces, thus, eliminating the chance of contamination. Whereas before, real estate projects showcase the common amenities in a building, the focus is slowly shifting towards private units. With many of us experiencing the quarantine at home, we have come to realize how important it is to keep our living spaces manageable and enjoyable. Areas catering to our personal interests such as fitness, cooking, and gardening are also becoming essential in the homes of the new normal. In addition, the home office is turning into a necessity for those who have grown comfortable with the telecommuting setup. Lastly, nature-inspired or biophilic features have become in demand for residential units and condominiums. People nowadays are becoming more aware of the benefits of a healthy environment on their well-being. Many have started their own mini urban farms to while away the time or, and to ensure a constant source of food supply. These urban farms range in size from actual garden plots to small potted plants on windowsills. These emerging trends imply that the new normal has become a necessity to help us rebuild our lives in the post-pandemic era. The homes of tomorrow are turning the tragedy of COVID-19 
into an opportunity to reshape our attitudes and improve our spaces. How will we live in the new normal? Based on these insights, we can anticipate the following changes in our communities. Townships or integrated communities having access to different industries are expected to rise. With everyone having experienced the difficulty of obtaining essential goods during the quarantine, many will opt for homes which have easy access to supermarkets, offices, schools, medical facilities, fitness centers, and places of worship. Multipurpose spaces will reign supreme both on macro and micro levels. At the residential level, open and flexible spaces will be highly attractive as people will have to carry out their daily tasks within the safety of their homes. Meanwhile, on the macro level, mixed-use developments will be sought after by those seeking comfort and convenience in the urban setting. Places harboring a myriad of activities will be attractive as people seek to travel less and do more within their own communities. People will seek to create nature in the landscape of cities and high-rise structures, creating a greater demand for urban gardens, urban gardens, sunny balconies, and wide windows. We are bound to take up planting within our homes, using pots and planters to compensate for a lack of yard in the city. With the threat of disease still looming in the environment, Many of us will voluntarily become homebodies in the new normal era. This will lead us to prioritize the actual units over the common amenities in condominiums and apartments. But our relationships with neighbors will be strengthened by our shared experience in the pandemic, allowing us to establish better communities even in vertical developments. In the era of the new normal, we can still pursue our daily lives and goals, although with some caution. We must work together with our neighbors and our communities to beat the COVID-19 virus. Hopefully, the new normal will help us to turn this experience into an opportunity to create better homes and to become better individuals. Thank you. Thank you, Vit, for that wonderful presentation and very insightful, uh, insightful presentation. I'm sure you have questions for architect Vit, but we'll get to that in a while during our Q&A. Now, for our next guest, we have interior designer Bianca Añonuevo Pabila. She is one of the creative minds behind Empire Designs, an award-winning design firm that specializes in upscale commercial and residential interiors with their signature, signature style of understated luxury. Apart from managing her own design firm, Empire Designs, Bianca also, also pursues her passion for teaching. She currently teaches trends in interior design and basic of interior design at the Philippine School of Interior Design. Her number one priority in life though is her lovely family. Bianca is first of all a wife and a mom to a five-year-old and a four-year-old. Hi, Bianca. Hi, Tech. Thank you for having me today. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so I'm here today to talk about the challenges of living in this new normal, like what Architect mentioned in her presentation. Um, I'm going to show you guys basically my experience during the lockdown and how my interior space changed in this new normal. I'm also going to give you guys some tips on how I was able to cope and how to design curated spaces for your home. Okay, so let me just talk about the challenges first. All right. So basically, the challenges. Oh, sorry. Let me just fix my screen share. So 
sorry. Technical difficulty. All right, here you go. All right, going back. So I want to talk to you guys about the challenges. And I think this is um, basically what everyone experienced during the lockdown. So I think everyone can really relate. Um, the main challenge is really combining everything, all the tasks that you would normally do somewhere else and put them all inside your home, right? So now you don't have a mall, you do your grocery online, um, you don't have a school anymore, a gym, an office, and a church. So showing here in my slide are pictures of the things that I was doing with my family during the lockdown, right? So this is me with my kids. So the struggle of having to exercise and with my kids around because I don't have a gym. Um, we also celebrated a birthday in the house. We, this is my team of designers. So we do Zoom seminars, you know, Zoom meetings. Um, everything is done via Zoom. Uh, how, school, homeschooling. So I'm also a mom. Um, I think all the moms right now are really having a hard time like teaching and working at the same time. So this is the kids doing their PE, doing Taekwondo, and also church. So it's really just combining your health, wellness, spirituality, school, your relationships, your work, all in one small space, right? So how do we do this? How do we um, curate or make spaces more functional? So right now, um, the key thing that we need to do is to focus on function. So designers, us designers, have this saying called form follows function. So what does that mean, basically? So when I say spaces, it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, rooms. I don't say rooms, right? Um, not everyone is really privileged enough to have big homes. So we only have a few areas where we can really combine things and what architect mentioned is really the importance of flexibility of open spaces so in my slide you can see here a little gym area you know a little wellness area reading nooks um home office spaces so these are again curated spaces or functional spaces and not necessarily an entire room for your office or an entire room for your gym right so like I said, spaces can be nooks or pocket areas. And so how do we cope with this chaos of bringing in all these activities into one small space? So basically, it's just really adding order. In any chaos, you need order, right? So what do you need to do? So these are my tips. Number one, it's really to assess your new norm needs. Like what architect mentioned, you know, we need a home office. We need a space to study or to do schooling. We need a wellness space and all that. So just really assess um, what you need. And then second, assess your current space. So what do I have right now? You know, what, what needs to change? What needs to be added? And then number three is to really purge. So this is very important. Like what Marie Kondo would say, you have to really analyze if the things that you currently own actually bring you joy. So less is more. Reduce, reduce, reduce. Like during the whole lockdown, I actually sold so many of my things, my kids' things, um, donated a lot of them, you know, threw some of them. Because, you know, you need to create some space, right? You're here most of the time inside your home. And you have to make sure that you are here um, living comfortably, basically. So this is number four. Rearrange your home based on your needs. This is actually a photo of my house. Um, this is the, sorry, this is, this should have changed. This is the before and this is the after. So the before is I actually have so many furniture. Um, you know, it's really meant for entertaining. Um, and then the after, if you switch that, is actually me and my family doing our daily things. So this is a photo of us during the lockdown. So my husband here is exercising while the kids are watching and while I was reading a book. So I really reduced so many of my things, like pulled out so much furniture, you know, move the coffee table, um, 
I have a little space here for my kids to really study and all that. So that's how this new normal will be. Like what architects said, it's really flexible spaces, really focusing on function, assessing your needs at the moment, and really finding ways for you to be able to live comfortably in this space, right? Okay, so step five is just really to add things based on your new normal. Um, this is again my home. I added some gym equipment. I was able to add some plants, lots and lots of plants. And then you can buy so many other things that would make you feel happy, you know, um, in creating a meditation space or wellness space. You can have some candles, you can have some art, you can have crystals. Just focus on the new things that would bring you joy. Okay. So basically, what I'm trying to say is that. Curated spaces doesn't necessarily mean like Instagram worthy spaces. Curated spaces actually are more functional spaces, right? Um, like as a designer, my home has changed based on my family's needs. And every time I talk to a client of mine and when I design their homes, I always ask them, you know, where do you do your activities? What do you do in the morning? Do you go out in the balcony, drink coffee and all that? So it's really primarily focused on your life or the people who live in this space. So a famous um, user experience designer, Liam Thurston, said, a designer's purpose is really to design for the people. And so I end with this, okay? How does in the interior design landscape change in this new normal is really creating comfortable spaces, little nooks, and making it work within your home. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Bianca, for such an interesting presentation about the new normal. So I guess many people are now raring to ask you a few questions of how they'll be able to redesign their uh, spaces and nooks. Now, for our last um, panelist, um, She's not an architect, she's not an interior designer, but she wears many hot hat. Uh, now, our last speaker for the day, she will delve more into the challenges of living in the new normal. Based on her experience during this lockdown, she hopes to inspire others to find something positive and productive amid the difficulties dealt by this unprecedented crisis we face. She is Pam Pastor. She started working as a journalist when she was 17. She grew up in the newsroom of the Philippine Daily Inquirer, where she is now the editor of Pop Culture Section, Super, and the Youth Section, To Be You. She is the author of books Paper Cut, Planet Panic, and one of the editors of the books, of the books Young Blood 4, 5, 6, and 7. She is also the vocalist of the band Mosey. In December 2015, she was diagnosed with clinical depression and anxiety disorder and has been using her voice and her stigma against mental illness. Let us all welcome Ms. Pam Pastor. Hi, Pam. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, okay, the first thing I want to tell all of you is it's okay to mourn the world that we used to live in because that is not the world that we live in anymore. I feel like so many of us have been so busy with the day-to-day -day of you know, trying to adjust to, to the strange world that we suddenly live in, that we haven't had the chance to pause and think and realize that we've been going through some really crazy times. So I want you to do that. I want you to pause and think about the past months, what you've done, what you've done to survive, and just pat yourself on the back because you deserve that. You acknowledge the things that you've done to adjust because it's not a joke. that The things that we've had to deal with the past months they've been pretty intense. It's okay to be sad about the things that you miss. It's okay to think about all the things that we used to take for granted. I mean, we never thought there would come a time when we wouldn't be able to hug whoever we wanted or shaking a stranger's hand is suddenly like the scariest thing in the world. I mean, it used to be such a normal thing or that you can never leave your house without a mask um, or going out on Tinder dates would be a no-no. Um, you know, um, these are things that we took for granted and things that we always thought we could do. And suddenly, nope. Um, even things that used to annoy me, like being in a 
packed bar. I hated that, like being bumped by strangers. Now it sounds like such a good thing. So, so it's okay. Like think about those things that we used to take for granted. Be sad about them, um, and that's totally fine. What one of the things that I've learned during the pandemic is that our feelings are valid, no matter what they are. I've had to grapple with feelings of guilt because you know I was safe at home. I didn't have to go out. I I could be productive in the house. I could do my work here. I had food to eat, and I felt so guilty about that. And these are the different ways that um, we as people deal with um, di uh, difficult times. And now we face another big challenge because we are adapting to the new normal while the pandemic is still happening. The pandemic is not over, but we have to talk about the new normal and we have to adjust to the new normal because life is moving, life is going on, birthdays are happening, graduations have happened, um, but the pandemic is still there. We have to keep remembering that. We still have 19,000 active cases in the Philippines more and more with more and more diagnosed each day. So it's not over. But at the same time, we're dealing with that. We also have to deal with the adjustment to this new normal. But one of the things that you have to realize, and we've seen this again and again, is that the crisis always brings out the best and the worst in people. I'm sure I can ask each one of you. And you can tell me stories even about just the people in your lives, about how the pandemic has brought out the best and the worst in them. We've seen some beautiful, beautiful ways that people have responded to the pandemic from the frontline feeders who fed thousands, thousands and thousands of health workers all over the Philippines each day with the help of restaurants and donors. Um, we've seen the way companies have responded, have taken care of their employees. We've seen people lending their cars, their homes, schools opening their doors to health workers. So there's so much beauty still out there, despite the horrible things that are happening. I also want you to know that while, you know, it's important for us to be helping those who are affected more, because um, we've all been affected by the pandemic in varying degrees, some more than others. For some of us, it's just an inconvenience. You know, none of us have gotten sick. Um, we're, we still have jobs. For others, it's, it's meant the loss of people they love and the loss of livelihood. So of course, um, we absolutely have to help the people who need help. But it's also really, really important for you to help yourself. Um, you know the thing that they say when you're in an airplane, when they tell you you have to put your oxygen mask on first before you help other people. It's true. And the same is true during the time of the pandemic. Self-care is even more essential than ever. And while in quarantine, one very, very important thing when it comes to self-care is really creating a space for yourself. And this is something that I learned pre-pandemic when I was first diagnosed with depression and anxiety disorder, I went back to my family home and one of the things that my doctor told me was, you have to create a space for healing. And you have to think of this in these terms. We all, all of us, whether you've gotten sick or not, we've all been dealing with so much the past months that we all in our own homes, really, we need a space for healing. And so you have to do that. I like to call it nesting. You have to create like a nice space for yourself in your home. Now I am the non-expert here. Like I know nothing about interior design and architecture as in like, you can show me a house. I will say it's a house. I don't know what kind of house it is, but I know what's cozy for me and what feels good and what makes me feel secure. And I know that whether you know a lot or you know nothing about design or architecture, you also know what makes you feel good, what makes you feel secure. So it's important for you to, to take care of your space and do the things that you um, can make a difference in your space because that's where we've been spending more time. It's, it's really, even if, you know, people have started going to the office, we've still been spending more time at home than we ever have ever. Um, so it's really important for you to create a space that you love. Um, our balance in life right now is so dependent on the kind of space and the use of space, of our use of space. I will give you an example. In the first few weeks of the lockdown, we haven't stopped working because as newspaper people, we, know, we don't stop working, you know? The only time we stop working is Good Friday, Black Saturday, that's it. Um, but I noticed that I was being overproductive. Hello, HR. <laughs> but it, it, it was so hard to know when to stop working because I was in my home and, and I was also working in my home and it was just hard to draw the line, like where do I stop? And so 
um, people who've been working from home pre-pandemic would always tell you have a separate space for work and a separate space for sleeping and relaxing. But the thing is, not all of us have that luxury. You know, we don't all live in mansions where we have all the space. I need to do everything in my bedroom because I need air conditioning and it's too hot in the Philippines. And so my sleeping room, my sleeping space and my working space is the same. So because, and I... I've been trying to find desk a desk that I want to buy but I have I've been I feel like everybody in the Philippines has been buying office chairs and desks so it's hard to find like a good desk and chair I've been trying online and so I've had to make do with what I have what I've done instead of changing my space is I've been changing my lighting so that's how I've been trying to to tell myself okay it's time to relax by changing my lighting to like the not so white officey lights there's this light bulb that i bought that requires no, no change in your like you don't need a dimmer or anything it's just when you switch it i'm sure like our experts can tell you what kind of bulb it is but like you switch it on it becomes a white light you switch it off you switch it on again it becomes that softer yellow light which i like for relaxing there um so, so there are little ways, or you know, if you like scents, if it's time to relax, you spray your lavender, or if you need to wake up, you spray your mint or spray citrus scents. Um, there are different ways that you can do that. But absolutely, the space that you live in um, right now is so crucial, and it's important that you love your space. I feel like this is also why a lot of people have been discovering different parts of their homes to love. People who've never cooked or baked in their lives before have started cooking and baking like pros. It's amazing. If you look at the Google Trends from March, April, May, there's been a crazy spike in people researching recipes. It's it's. It's intense, like people are really cooking and baking because one, it's comforting. And you know, those moments that you're doing nothing but thinking about the recipe is a break from everything else that's happening. And it's, again, I think it's part of nesting. The same way that people are starting to garden and plant and, and harvest their own herbs for using in cooking. I think it's such a beautiful thing. It's again, it's another way to fall in love with the space that you have. Some friends have been asking, because I've only left the house four times um, this entire uh, lockdown. And people have been asking, have you not been going crazy because you're usually out all the time? And no, actually no, because I actually like the space that I've managed to create. I, it can be as simple as changing your sheets or finding a blanket that you really like. It doesn't have to get expensive, you know. So another thing that I want you to realize is that you can live a full life, even if you're just at home. You can still learn new things. The internet is your best friend. Um, one of the things I've been doing now during my free time is I've been learning about racism because of the Black Lives Matter movement. I feel like I thought I knew things about racism and then it turns out, oh no, I don't know enough. So I've been trying to teach myself that. But then things do get overwhelming because apart from the pandemic, things are happening with the government, things are happening elsewhere. You have to know when to take a step back, when to take a breather, when to just stop. If you're feeling overwhelmed, stop, um, pause, take yourself away from it, play with your dog, watch a movie. Um, it's really, well, I think the most important thing to remember is you have to be kind to yourself and you have to be kind to your others. And then get creative creative in terms of curating the space around you creative in terms of celebrating the special occasions in your in your family's lives like sunday it's father's day um of course you, you guys i'm sure are already planning things and also getting creative like in terms of livelihood like people for example um people whose work uh, depends on events have suddenly lost a means of livelihood, but people have found ways around it. Suddenly, everybody's selling stuff out of their homes. They're making sushi bake, like there are maybe like 50 kinds of sushi bake now, and it's getting intense. Or like how many iterations of ube cheese pandesal have we seen? You know, like people are just really getting creative. Another way that people are getting creative is, this was really like a big surprise for me. I discovered this on my mom's birthday in May. People, were able to create a business out of buying Conti's cakes for people. 
because because apparently like this they sell out super fast so people offer to buy them for you if if you want to get your hands on mango bravo so people are still finding ways to hustle under the lockdown people are finding ways to make money to make a livelihood and you can do it as well the internet is your best friend use it to connect to your loved ones if you're feeling sad there are so many online sellers now it's a fantastic way to to support local businesses as well there are so many great viber groups and facebook groups featuring sellers who are selling local stuff and again don't stop being vigilant because remember the pandemic is not over keep keep using your alcohol keep washing your hands don't leave the house without a mask you know filipinos have always been described as resilient but and every time there's a calamity that happens people are described as people are described as resilient filipinos are described as resilient but then after a while it became a dirty word right people started hating that filipinos were described as resilient because um they say it's become an excuse for people not to do their jobs because they know oh filipinos are going to deal with it kaya nila yan even without like the help of the government um the private sector will step in but you know what i feel like it's time for us to take back that word resilient and embrace it because that's really who we are we really are resilient and we are going to sur survive this i will say it again i started i started with this and i will say it again it's okay to mourn the world that we used to live in but it's now time to embrace the new world we are going to survive this pandemic and together with creativity with compassion with kindness with self-care with togetherness we're going to thrive Thank you so much, Pam, for such an uplifting um, talk for this afternoon. Um, indeed, I agree with Pam. There is no challenge too tough or daunting, especially for a, for a resilient lot like the Filipinos. I guess instead of um, focusing on the negative effects, we should just see this pandemic as a chance to really reset and rethink of our priorities. Clearly, our homes have served as a safe sanctuary during this lockdown. And our families, as mentioned by Pam and friends, are the pillars that will help us get through all this, all these stressful and sleepless nights. I mean, you have a home. Enjoy your home. Enjoy the company of your family. Um, okay, now we move on to the second part of our webinar for the Q&A. Uh, I just have a question for all our panelists. Um, how do you think has the pandemic affected or altered our lives and how did it affect our preferences um who would like to answer first pam or okay bianca yeah so like what i mentioned earlier um the focus right now is really your home right and um like i said most of the stuff that you would normally do outside your home is now within your home and so that is major already we are all affected in that way and so it's really just a matter of coping and creating curated spaces or functional spaces no like what sam said everything has to be about you right like about it I, honestly i'm an interior designer but you don't really need an interior designer to know what works for you, right? I mean, it's you who's living there. And as a designer, that's also what I do. I also just ask my client, what do you do? Where do you do what you do? Do you do yoga? You know, do you exercise? Do you want to go to the balcony? So it's really more, um, maybe this pandemic, like what Pam said, made us know ourselves a little bit more, right? I mean, it's just really assessing ourselves and our, assessing our space and how we can now, you know, navigate through this space. And what, like I said, it doesn't matter whether you have a big space or, you know, a mansion. It's really just creating pocket nooks or moving things around, reducing some things, adding, adding in some things. So I guess that's really how we were affected by this pandemic. Sorry, from your perspective, Vit, as an architect, how has this pandemic altered or changed the way we live? Should the designs of the past or the architecture of the past pre-COVID should now be uh, disregarded? And should we all go back to the drawing table and recreate spaces? Um, uh, first of all, I 
personally, uh, I think that in terms of practicality, most of the designs that we've already come up with prior to COVID-19 are still applicable. So no, we don't need to do a major overhaul and go back to the drawing board. Many of us still carry out the same activities, although we have to rethink uh, the ways that we do these in order to, to comply with the needs of the new normal. I think that the pandemic required designers and planners to tweak our approach a bit when it comes to our design to be able to enforce social distancing in spaces. For, for, for Pam, Pam, would you say that um, dealing with the pandemic um, was initially very difficult, but um, I mean, after a week, a month, it became almost natural to just stay home and stay put. Like, especially for you, you've been traveling a lot, covering events, and then suddenly everything was put to a stop. How difficult was it? It was really weird. It felt like being trapped in an episode of Black Mirror. It was like, what is happening? It didn't feel real. Like, for the first few weeks, it felt like we were all gonna wake up and be like, oh, it was just a dream. Because it's so weird. But... You're right. After, it, it, it just takes a while. You kind of find the rhythm. It's just weird trying to find like all your interviews. You have to do them via Zoom. Um, I mean, I never used Zoom before the pandemic and now it's like such a necessity. Um, and I hate like doing video calls. So, <laughs> But um, it's, it's, re it's been an adjustment. But I feel like I, I think that, yeah, it, it, it taught me how resilient people really are and that we can adjust to anything. But um. It's been, it's been weird, but it's been an, it's gotten easier and I kind of have to remind myself that, wait, you know, like, yeah, the pandemic is not over yet. Things are not normal yet because it's kind of started, it's, it's, it's starting to feel normal, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, the wearing of masks, spraying yeah. well, it has become actually a part of your daily routine. Yeah. What were the major realizations you've had while on quarantine? And can you at least uh, name at least three things or situations that made you appreciate even more the comfort of your home? Number one, no traffic. It makes you realize just how much time we spent in traffic before the pandemic. Number two, I spent all day, all night with my dog. He's the happiest, like, I think he's the happiest creature ever because I'm here all the time. And I, I'm here to supply treats. Um, number three, it's been a nice chance because I live with my mom. But because of how busy we get, she usually just sees me when I'm leaving the house or I'm arriving home, like, in the middle of the night. So it's been a chance. Like, at the end of each day, I usually have dinner with her and we would talk. So it's been a bonding experience. I feel like we haven't done that in such a long time. So it's become parang a good time to bond with family as well. Um so I, I just, I, I, I try to frame it that way instead of thinking about, oh, it's like losing our freedom. Because you can think of things in that way. But I kind of wanted, I wanted to look at it in a sense of what did we gain? So like I got time, I got extra time because I'm not in traffic all the time. I get to spend time with my monster here. And then I get time to spend with my mom. So yeah. I think um, actually that should just be the attitude of instead of looking at this pandemic as a parang as, as a curse, might as well look at it really as a time to restart. And we, I think it's time to view our homes in such a, in a different light because it used to be na parang we're just um, timing and then move out again and then go in again. So, but but for our um, architect friends here and not to our interior designer, in terms of building, planning, and design, do we now see a complete overhaul of all the designs and drawings that we've seen prior to the pandemic? I mean, should we just, um, is it a must to create now spaces for wellness, your own space, uh, and your own isolation space? I mean, how is that? Especially if you have very limited space. Um, well, I don't think you have to do a major overhaul. Like what I did in my home, it's just really a matter of like plus and minus, right? You just remove things that don't really, the things that you don't really need. Like my design for my home was really meant for entertaining. And so, you know, I'm not going to be entertaining anyone soon. So I have to remove so much furniture and now it's my gym. 
right? So it's just really tweaking spaces. And it doesn't mean that you have to have, like I said, a big space or even a huge budget. You can buy so many things right now in Lazada or Shopee, like little things that would help you. Um, with Architect, she mentioned like herb gardens. I also bought so much herb gardens, um, like plants and all these things. And these little tweaks actually make your space so much brighter, so much better. It doesn't have to be major. It doesn't have to be expensive at all. How about for you, Vid? Would you say that um, living in an estate now is more valuable? I mean, for... There is actually a question from one of our you know, viewers. For Architect Vit, how will high-density urban communities be redesigned to adapt it to the new normal or anticipate preventive measures for a future pandemic crisis? Okay. Um, I think that high-density urban communities actually represent one of the more difficult challenges we are facing during the pandemic. So... Um, I, in, in my presentation, I mentioned that right now we are prioritizing nature, privacy, wellness, and health in our, in our private spaces. I think whether we live in a condominium or in a socialized housing project, these same values are still applicable. So in terms of high-density urban communities, um, when it comes to nature, there should be a provision of communal spaces for, for, let's say, urban farming. So it will be helpful for everyone to have a chance to, um, to have a space where they can practice you know, herb planting and um, um, planting their own food supply. So in a way, this will not only allow us to take care of our mental health, but at the same time to assure that we have food supply even if we don't have a job or income in times of the pandemic. Then when it comes to privacy, I think that there should still be a provision of enclosed spaces for households. You know, one opportunity that we can be thankful for during this pandemic is that since there's a need for social distancing, uh, finally people will be able to, well, finally we will realize that it's important to uphold the occupancy, minimum occupancy areas per person. Because in, in the building code, we actually have um, minimum space um, recommended for each person living in a home. Nowadays, I think with, with the need for social di distancing, this can be strictly implemented already. Even if you live in a condominium or in a, in a urban project. So this will allow us to remain safe even if we have to live with other people. So in terms of wellness, uh, I think it's still flexibility that we have to uphold. So as mentioned by Bianca, um, it, it, you know, the spaces that we have right now, right nowadays is not exactly, doesn't follow up an actual formula. You only have to design for the for your own activity. So if you're into exercising, then you can make your own home gym with whatever you have at home. At the same time, if you're into other hobbies like cooking or, or um, growing herbs, you can turn your existing spaces and transform them to be able to accommodate your, your activities. And lastly, in terms of health, I think this is one of the things that we should really turn our focus on. Um, it's not um, it's not the, the idea of more public hygiene spaces will in, in our communities is actually um, in, uh, is actually viable, especially nowadays when we have to ensure that you know infection will be kept to a minimum. So I see that more public wash stations, toilets might be more might, might be constructed over the couple, the next couple of months that, now that we are battling the COVID-19 virus. Okay, this one is for Bianca. Um, how do I design my new home given my tight budget? I think um, our attendee moved from her previous home to a much smaller space. I mean, what are the tips that you can yeah. offer Bianca? 
Um, well, it's really just multifunctional spaces, basically. Um, like I said, it's not really about rooms, but more like pocket spaces or nooks. So your dining table can actually be converted into your office space. And at the end of the day, you know, pack up your laptop, do your table, and that's it. So it's um, small spaces actually are easier to clean as well. So it's just really like that. You don't really have to have a huge budget. It's just combining spaces to be multifunctional. Their living room can also be your gym. It can also be, let's say, your yoga space, you know. Um, it's just that, basically. Um, I've done a lot of model units for Ortigas Land. They have so many nice units right now that have open spaces huge windows, balconies. So that's important if she's looking for, um, if our viewer is actually looking for, you know, condos that really maximize the space. Uh, yeah, so there, it's basically just finding the right uh, space or area for your activity. Just going back to that. It's really that. Okay, this one is um, a bit off topic, but Pam, someone's asking, where did you get down your tattoos? To be fair to everyone. Oh, I, I I have a list of different artists. Message me on Instagram. I'll tell you. <laughs> That's so weird. It's a long list, but here, but uh, in Manila, I go to uh, June Tats, June De Pasupil, and Luigi Laksamana. Okay, yeah, it's a, yeah. specific colors now that you would recommend to help calm yung the, the frazzled nerve. Colors? Nang tattoo? No, no, I mean, I, I think in terms of uh, room ah, color. Okay, okay. Um, okay, it's weird because it, it really depends on what you like. They say that blue, like light blues are calming, but I really feel like it's preference because some people say like gray is a depressing color, but I love gray and I love black. Like my favorite bed sheets are black. So it's a matter of preference. I think you'll notice like the colors that you're drawn to. But I feel like the pros are better. Sh should talk about paint, paint better because... Oh my god, like the few times that I've chosen paint, I really did a horrible job. Like I my god. So I think they need the, the let's ask the experts about the colors, please. Also, there's one question. Is um having a pet would having a pet help in times yeah. of Yes. They're the best stress busters, I swear. I swear, like I can't I, yeah, I couldn't imagine going through quarantine without my dog. I feel like I I might not have survived quarantine without him because he makes me laugh every day even if he does crazy things like eat chocolate and thinks that he shouldn't mm -hmm. eat. Yeah. But please ask them for a no because I would love to know about colors as well from the yeah. Okay, so Bianca and Vit, someone's asking, what's the right color though? For this um, Oh, Lord. So, I mean, there's no right and wrong answer in terms of color, but then if you want something like brighter and something that would make your space, you know, bigger, feel wider, it's always just lighter colors. Um, but, you know, it doesn't mean that you're not allowed to have those accent colors, right? You can just choose darker colors, but put it in like one area just to divide the space. Again, with our pocket spaces, you know, you can have predominantly an all white or beige room but then in your little nook where you want to read or you know have your own space then you can have a different color so that actually helps you divide the space without actually having to put you know partitions or divisions just changing the wall finish is um already a big thing yeah i i agree with bianca um in terms of color there isn't actually a formula if you're if you're worried that your space right now is kind of small, you can use um, you can opt for colors that are lighter. Like for example, in in my case, I prefer pastel colors when it comes to rooms because they seem to make things appear larger. Um, on the contrary, uh, darker spaces tend to make make feel make spaces feel more intermingled. But if you know, in in case of bedrooms, for example, if you like to have a more intimate feel, then you can go with dark 
dark colors. So really, there's no formula. You just go with what you want. And you don't even have to limit yourself to color. You can go with patterned uh, wallpapers and all that. So anything that will make you happy and comfortable in your home is okay. Okay. As much as I want to ask as many questions as possible, I'm, I think I'm now down to my last question. This is for everyone. In choosing a home, what must now be the main consideration of our home buyers? And for Pam, what advice can you give to our viewers who continue to feel lost and down because of the pandemic? So uh, we'll start first with our architect and interior designer. Bianca, you, you go ahead. In choosing a home, um, what must now be the main consideration? All right. Okay, so whenever you choose a home, you always have to first look at the layout, right? That's what I do. I check how the developer laid out the space. Um, and then try to assess, again, your personal activities, you know? Um, are the spaces conducive to your own liking, to how you go about your day-to-day? -day? So that's very important. And like I said, bigger you bigger um open spaces you know are really more functional it's not anymore having different partitions something that's a little bit more open um having a lot of windows would be nice uh, before i didn't really like having a balcony but then now because of the pandemic <laughs> i i really appreciate our balcony at the moment so i guess that's really something to consider as well um yeah, that's that's basically it. Just really assessing your needs and your and having a functional, multi-purpose area for everything. So when you choose, make sure that you can really envision how you will work or live in this unit before you even decided buying it. Okay. Um, in terms of choosing a home, I think uh, right now it's important to consider the con the requirements of the new normal. So, um, like I mentioned in my presentation before, we're shifting towards a preference for um, contactless technology, like um, uh, smart home technology and uh, urban gardens. And so I think um, that, that when you choose a home, it, it must be, the, the home must be flexible enough to, to adapt to the needs of the times. Um, for example, the no, I'm just thinking at the top of the, my head. No, my one of the current projects of Ortigas Land, the uh, Empress, they offer um, home. What do you call that? Um, contactless technology in in their units. Um, so this will really prove helpful, especially if we have to carry out the social distancing. But besides that, um, I agree with Bianca as well. You should choose a home that is. That can accommodate your activities. So if you're if you're someone who is you know who wants to have access to greenery to to uh, to open spaces, even if you have to live in a in a condominium, it's best to choose one that you know that is light and airy. And I think it's really about your personal preference. Um. Uh, words for um so if if uh the lockdown is getting you down if if you're feeling <clears throat> um down during the quarantine it helps to listen to what your body's saying sometimes you know you need a break sometimes it can be your body just wanting a break from all the bad news mm -hmm. sometimes it means you need to talk to someone um and i get it because it depends on how you're feeling. There are times when you feel sad and the, the thing that would make you feel better is talking to a friend. But there are times also when it's easier to talk to a stranger because parang you're not bogged down by everything else that's happening in your relationship. And you know, sometimes it's easier to, to open up to somebody who doesn't know anything about you. So if that's what you want to do, there are helplines and hope lines that you can call and they, there are people ready to talk to you anytime. Doctors are also now doing tele um, consultations um, because, you know, um, clinics aren't uh, back to their normal schedules yet. So you can do that as well. But if you can reach out to people that that you know you feel comfortable talking to that would be good as well sometimes it's also because for me i don't usually i don't always it doesn't like if i'm feeling down it doesn't always mean i want to talk to someone sometimes it just means i feel 
I need to treat myself. Like maybe it it means I just I I or I'll do something nice for myself. Whether it's taking a long, long, long shower or or ordering a chocolate cake just for me. Um. So so there are little things that you can do to make yourself feel better. And again, the space. Sometimes you know when you feel really strange and parang things feel so chaotic sometimes it's also because of our environment and it really makes a difference when you create like a good space for for you to live in and and for you to relax in um so yeah but reach out reach out and 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 um you know it happens that uh, strangers do reach out to me because i've been so vocal about uh, mental health and mental wellness so So if that person wants more tips like just message me. I I reply, I promise. Okay. That was such a great discussion, highly informative one and I must say very helpful and inspiring. Unfortunately, that's uh, the only time we have left. Now I just have a few words to officially close this. Um first I'd like to thank uh, Ortigas Land for allowing us to host this uh, webinar and then um, indeed our developers whose estates and projects manage to afford their residents convenience implemented innovations that could provide that extra sense of safety and security we would like to thank them never has the concept of having a master plan mixed use estate been more important than today actually many people were asking me if now is a good time to invest in real estate. This is what I have to say. One must see a property as more than just an investment, but rather as a sanctuary that would provide you a safe ground where you can continue to comfort, comfort, comfortably live and thrive no matter the situation. More importantly, over the long term, real estate will prove to be a stable and reliable asset for one. I mean, its value will never diminish and it's like some having something that could assure the future of your family of your loved ones so i guess um there is really no saying in the now is the right time now is not yet the right time it's really more of knowing your priorities and knowing what you want for your family so again this wraps up our webinar for today thank you again to our panelists architect vet and to our interior designer miss bianca And of course, to Pam Pastor. Um, thank you for sharing your time and your insights and expertise as well. And to Ortigas Land. Again, I am Texa Maniego, the editor of the Inquire Property section. Have a good day, everyone. Get a chance to take home an Apple gadget. Get in touch with our property specialists to know how to get an Apple gadget from Ortigas Land. Thank you. You're welcome. Are we offline now?